overjoyed at the fact that I would be there to be a part of this momentous occasion. But the other thing that I saw which really disheartened me was the people gearing themselves up to use the issue of social distancing against this movement. So, if I could please ask from the bottom of my heart, all of you with your camera phones and whatever images, always remember, the world is watching. So whatever images you capture, take a second look before you put it out to the world. Because if it is a bad example, if it shows people, there are instances where we will be close together and it's unavoidable. But where best, share the images and the videos that show this event in the most positive light possible. We are here because of positivity. This is a positive thing that we are doing. So bear that in mind. Double check and confirm every image, every video. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Edinburgh is blessed with so many artists, right? Before we have our, our next uh, artist to social distancing, I'm going to go on and on about it, all right? So I know you're expecting it anyway, all right? Okay, so officially, hello Edinburgh! Yeah. black skin 
they were enslaved for hundreds of years, beaten and killed. And what is very sad is that after 300 years, they're still being killed in the United States in a manner where somebody, a policeman, the law, is kneeling on a black person's neck, on his neck, for the sole reason that he's black. Now, how can we justify that? Come on, it's not a crime. How can we justify killing somebody because of a pigment? No, no, no. Because of a pigment. We are all different, but the same. We're all one humanity, nothing less. And if you take anything away, away from what I s say today, is that we're all one humanity, nothing less. lifespan of a black slave, a black male slave of 20 odd years of age, was 10 years. The average life of a black slave was less than 10 years. That's why they had a slave trade. The slave trade was to replace slaves who had such a short lifespan. And to bring that message home today to us, it is in walking distance. You go up to St. Andrew's Square one day and you look at that statue of Henry Dundas. It's 150 feet high. And why is he there? Do you know why he's there? He actually said that the slave trade should be gradually abolished. Not immediately abolished. He said it should be gradually abolished. And that made it lasted an extra 15 years. 15 years. In 15 years, do you know what that means? 630,000 African people were transported into slavery over 15 years. And the politicians at the time knew exactly what he was doing, exactly. In fact, one politician described it as gradual abolition. He described it as gradual murder. Man. And we have a statue in the middle of the city to commemorate, to commemorate that man's doing. But there is an issue, as you say, take it down or should we put a plaque on it? The fact is I'm on a plaque committee in Edinburgh at Edinburgh Council and we have been debating it for two years and we cannot in fact agree to put on that plan that he gradually abolishes the he calls gradual abolition of the slave trade we cannot agree when it is true and that is the essence of slavery today our politicians cannot agree to the truth that black people are underrepresented in the management of our society. Black people, in fact, are have got a, a, a greater arrest rate. They're dying at a higher level in, in with, with COVID-19. It's not genetics. It's deprivation. And if the statue doesn't come down, we want a plaque on it. And we want a plaque to say the truth. Because we may not think... <laughs> Three, the act of emancipation says the slave owners were given 23 billion for their slaves who were property. And the act says they were entitled to it. Slave owners were entitled for the lives of people as property. 
what we must do today is make sure that for the future that we don't live in a society that believes it can kill somebody over 8 minutes and 40 seconds in the middle of the, the world to see and reckon it's okay. It's not okay. No. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of all those people who were killed for no difference other than for a pigment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Professor Palmer, thank you. Hello, hello, hello. I'm glad that everyone is here and I want to say thank you so much. It's overwhelming. I am touched to the bottom of my heart. And as a team, we're all so touched and we can feel each and every one of the black voices that is here today to stand for our justice because we need it. We need it now and we need to know that black lives do matter. Black lives are valued and they are accredited in the UK and all over the world itself today. We are important to society and we are important to the culture of people living here and for our children here every day and our nephews and our nieces. Black lives matter! Yes, they do! They do! I just want to start by saying to all my black brothers and sisters, we will all be seen, we will all be heard, and if the world won't hear you, then me, as a black mother myself, I will hear each and every one of your voices. I will listen to you, I will see you, and I will be the, the mother that you need if you don't have one yourself. I will hear you and respect you. I am sorry that each and every one of us has had to grow up in a Please world of back. oppression and be oppressed. I am sorry that we've had to experience oppression and I'm sorry that, each, that our parents and their parents before them went through the same oppression. And I refuse to let our children, our nephews and our nieces go through the same indirect justice that is being put in the world today. I'm not sorry for my anger, my hurt or my tears. I am not sorry for my passion or my feelings here today. I will not apologize for being unapologetic than myself in a world that does not want me to exist. This is true. We all deserve the freedom and the acceptance and to discover and become the best, most authentic versions of ourselves without fear of oppression, without fear of violence, without fear of rape, and even without fear of leaving the goddamn house. Sean Monterosa, Justin Howell, Jamal Flood, Eric Garner, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Dominique Clayton, Trayvon Martin, Brianna Taylor, Ezel Ford, Ahmad Arbery, Tony McDade, George Floyd. This is only a small handful coming from America. Shukri Abdi, Sarah Reed, Nuna Cardoso, Julian Cole, Mark Duggan, Rashan Charles, Edson DaCosta, Stephen Lawrence, Belly Majinga. These all happened in the UK, so when people say that racism is an American problem, just look at the guy got an amen up in here!
denial. I am a powerful tool. I can make you ignore anything that you choose. Deny that pain came from the bruise. Deny all hatred from its very roots. Disguise the lynch mob and hide the noose. Pretend the Betty was not hung strange fruit. Burn all the pictures of the children smiling. Doing that for centuries. So should I be polite and say go Miley? In preservation of your white fragility. In resurrection of white Christ on me. Well, please tell me where does his judgment be? For I feel I bear the weight of the cross on me. You, you steal with the state and the cost is on me. Don't cross me in debate. Your lies are lost on me. You seem shocked when I say it as though it's a mystery. For the sake of fake colonial history, it doesn't take a genius to work it out. Please tell me now to which Lord you are devout. Please tell me now how you afford your big white house built on, built on foundations of denial. Because you used my ancestors for your financial survival. Ignorance. 
voices are being heard. We are making changes. We are coming up in this society and making sure that in 10 years, in five years, in three years, however many damn years it takes, that we are going to see a change. And it shouldn't be. And I know that we are here for Mr. George Floyd, who was murdered on the streets and killed like worse than a dog. I'm sorry, sister. Feel your pain. I read his words the other day, and I'm just gonna end with his words, mm. his final words. Mm. It's my face, man. I didn't do nothing serious, man. Please, 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 I can't breathe. Please, man, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please, man can't breathe my face. Just get up. I can't breathe, please. I can't breathe, shit. I will, I can't move. Mama, mama, I can't. My knee, my nuts, I'm through, I'm through. I'm claustro claustrophobic. My stomach hurts, my neck hurts, everything hurts. Some water or something, please, please. I can't breathe, officer. Don't kill me. They gonna kill me, man. Come on, man. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They gonna kill me, man. They gonna kill me. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please, sir. Please. Please. I can't breathe. Our lives matter more than those last four words. We deserve more. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Okay. Come on, everyone here, black, white, Asian, everyone. I'm so proud of you. So proud. Give yourself a round of applause for being here for the start. I could say I'm very qualified to talk about race hate in Scotland. From the day I was born, I was left in the hospital because of the colour of my skin. Five years old in Easter House, Glasgow, painted white at five years old. When I was 14, beaten near to death in a police van in Shettleston in Glasgow. I was saved from one cop who said, you're killing him. I survived that. When I seen George Floyd, it brought back everything. But we'll get to him later. During the 90s within Edinburgh, I seen many things. I seen football casuals attacking Asian shopkeepers, bullying and beating and killing African people. Myself and many other brothers, including Scotty, who's here with his family, stood up against them. And I'm letting you all know here, it ends now. If you live in Edinburgh, and if someone's attacking you and the police do not respond, Call me. Call me. There's many young brothers I see here. I see my godson tied on with his brothers. They will back me. Many others will back me. But you make sure you call me first. Because we will not live in fear anymore. By any means necessary. Can you hear the back? Can you hear? Can you hear? Catch me on Facebook, sweetheart. <laughs> and as we go on, so we are in the 90s and then we move in and I see the Scottish referendum coming up. I was at a dinner party, this posh Tory said to me, so Joe, if the jocks win this, will the blacks rise up next? That's stuck in my craw. 
I thought, you know what? This, this is going to end. And but who gets into power? We all focused on Trump. Focus on Boris. He's just as bad. Just as racist. Just as evil. Are you with me? We have our own evils to fight here. But I'm just going to ask for it to be said three times. George Floyd! George Floyd! George Floyd! Thank you. Seeing all these races here, every nationality, every skin colour, every gender, every sexual orientation in one place for one purpose breaks my heart with joy instead of sadness. You guys are amazing. Because without, without you, this doesn't happen. They said, don't do this. Hell no. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Edinburgh, I love you. Thank you. To move back just a little bit, please. We're trying to enforce social distancing. I was 10 years old. I walked into a shop with my mum and I left as any child would do. And someone came up to me. He's older than me, more than five years older than me. And what did he do? He came up to me, started calling me a monkey, making monkey noises at me, shoving bananas in my face. And I'll tell you what the police did. They made him say sorry for all of that. The police don't do anything. They do things that help us, but it isn't enough. Yes, yes. yes. Tell them. Tell them. You get to walk the streets free, whilst my kind are behind bars despite our pleas. And there's evidence that actually proves they're innocent, but the police just say they've misplaced it. Let's face it, this kind of manipulation is basic. All kind of behind bars because the crime is sought in process. Because there's a project that makes my kind look bad on purpose so we can carry your heavy burdens. But I'm certain that you're starting to get nervous because my kind are tired of carrying around your pain. Knowing if we say something about the police will be shamed, but you can do the exact same thing and get away. Because if you say something, you're being democratic. But if we say something, we're being called haters, fakers, and all of the above. And the ones calling us this are inherently racist without a doubt. I could go on forever and I would like to do so, but I think you've got the message. I hope you actually learned the lesson. Because we need to be progressive, not aggressive. We're actually people, not a person. How many times? How many times? How long should we have to cry? When are you going to hear us? When are you going to hear us? Scotland, they say, okay, oh, we've got a fair and equitable society. We say it's not fair. It's not fair as long as that house over there doesn't have a black face to represent our voice. You cannot represent me. You cannot represent my children. How would you know what racism feels like?
from you. We're going to come to that big house over there and say, we need representation. Yeah. We're coming to your schools. Yeah. We need representation. Yeah. We're coming to organizations. We need black CEOs. Yeah. We need to make our voice heard. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all the support and all of you for being here. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to share a poem with you that I've wrote about my experience as a black woman and how I feel that society views black women and how we are treated and how we're viewed. The things people notice about me are normally the same things that used to dehumanize me. A certain shade of lipstick or hair color to fashion sense and the tone and volume of my voice. The lingo and slang that I use somehow allow every other group in society to make prejudgments before they judge me as a human. Always complying to Western standards of beauty, a black woman in a blonde wig will receive more hate than a white woman wearing cornrows or should I say boxer braids. Purely for what society views as natural, why is it acceptable for a white woman to wear fake tan, get lip fillers and butt enhancements in order to gain a body similar to mine naturally? Yet I relax my hair or wear a wig and I'm shamed for it. Choose to leave my hair natural and it's my black ancestors that shame me also. How does a person grow up securely when she lives in fear of being authentically herself? Because it will affect how people socialize with her and her life chances also. A life where part of growing up is a realization that you're the bottom of the pecking order. You're the bottom of the food chain because of gender but also because of the color of your skin. The challenges we face as black women are sometimes incomparable. Why does the world throw so much at us with the expe expectation that we can handle it? We seem to be raised differently with, with the need to have a tougher outer exterior. There's lessons in life that only our black mothers have passed on down to us, as they have struggled too in a similar way. The idea that the econ economy provides a glass ceiling, what option do you have when the cement, there's a cement ceiling that lies between you and the glass? You're constantly trying so hard to break. It might sound excessive, excessive, or you may not believe it, but with that being said, would you believe that the strands of hair that come out of my head can be discussed, whether or not I'm professional enough for the job I'm trying for? If not, ask Google. Look up, West, um, look up professional hairstyles for the workplace. Google will tell you everything you need to know. I express myself through words, clothing, hairstyles, and the words the world labels me ghetto. When a white girl does this, she's the height of creation. The same way, the same dress can look different on two bodies. But because society sexualizes me, I have to be cautious. Is it too short? Is it too tight? Does my bum look big? Even though I like the dress, what kind of attention do I want? Better yet, do I want any at all? A simple pair of jeans can attract unsolicited attention. I am not your fetish. I am not a robot. I am a human. I also have feelings. Surprisingly, I am beautiful enough. I don't need no Western standards. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black women matter! Black women matter! Black men matter! Black children matter! Black lives matter! We all matter! We all matter! attention because this is all stuff that we're going to need to hear to educate ourselves and bring about change. Hello. Now, I've been to the furthest reaches of this park. In public as a black woman, as people expect me to be angry all the time. Right? If you listen to what I have to say, you'll realize that it's not just emotions, it's facts. Right? So I would encourage you, if you are a victim of racism today, or... No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Thank you! Thank you! Okay, guys. We have, um... Taken, we've, account we've put aside 30 
20 minutes for uh, safe movement of people leaving this event, right? So we're drawing to a close just now. I want you to really just take in everything you have heard today. All the faces you've seen today. Take everything into consideration. It's going to take me, it's going to take you to get rid of this, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to have... Um, we're going to leave this place safely. I'm going to ask the people at the back to start moving out first. And then we will move from the center. But before we go, and before the music starts playing, Edinburgh, Black Lives Matter! One more time! Black Lives Matter! On your feet! Because of trauma that has not been processed yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we all know somebody we all know somebody if it's not us we all know somebody we're gonna have two minutes silence all right fists up in the air edinburgh two minutes yeah. silence <laughs>